Trump asked for options to attack Iran, and he did it days after the 2020 race was called for Biden. So I'm going to we're going to talk more about that in a second, but let me give you some of what they say here. Last Thursday, President Donald J. Trump assembled senior advisors in the Oval Office to ask them whether he could take action against Iran's most important nuclear weapon site within the coming weeks, the New York Times reported on Monday. A range of senior advisors dissuaded the president from moving ahead with a military strike. The advisors, including Vice President Mike Pence, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, Christopher C. Miller, the acting defense secretary, and General Mark A. Milley, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, warned that a strike against Iran's facilities could easily escalate into a broader conflict in the last weeks of Mr. Trump's presidency, according to the Times. The International Atomic Energy Agency reported on November 11th that Iran's uranium stockpile was 12 times bigger than permitted. Pause. The word permitted there is questionable because we pulled out of the Iran deal. We ripped up the Iran deal. So they don't have to listen to the terms anymore because we ripped up the deal. So of course they're going to do that. Of course they're going to have more uranium than they would have if they were still in the deal. If we didn't rip it up, they wouldn't have done that. And if you say, Kyle, that's speculation. It's really not. Every single time the IAEA checked to see if they were abiding by the terms of the deal, they were abiding by it 100%. So that's our fault that they did this. That's the truth. They might not like it, but that's the truth. Now, why did he do this? What happened? I thought Donald Trump was, you know, Mr. I'm going to pretend to be anti-war. What happened was, when it was clear that Biden won the race, now Trump's, of course, still denying it on Twitter and, you know, acting like that's not true. Of course, it is true. Biden won the race. Um, his thought process was, how do I leave a mess for Biden and make it so that he doesn't get back into the 2015 Iranian nuclear deal? That was his thought process. His thought process was, I need to leave a mess for Joe Biden. I need to make it impossible for him to get back in that Iranian nuclear agreement. What's one way to do that? Let's launch an attack. So, and I've said this to you a million times. He has no core. He has no real beliefs. He has no ideology. He has no philosophy. He's a vapid, empty shell of a man who's driven by petty personal grievances. Okay, and here you have an example where because of a personal grievance, I lost to this guy. Let me try to get back at him in any way I can. What if I attack a sovereign country? What if I start a war? Just so that when Biden comes in, he's like, oh my God, now I got to deal with a crisis. I got to deal with a war with Iran. That's the kind of man Donald Trump is. I know you know that. A lot of people don't know that when he pretends to go around talking like he's anti-war. By the way, same time this story comes out, he's doing fake anti-war stuff in Iraq and Afghanistan. He's he, he's acting like we're withdrawing. We're not. We're keeping 2,500 troops in Iraq, 2,500 troops in Afghanistan, and we're shuffling thousands of others to other places around the Middle East. It's a farce. He's not actually withdrawing. and He's pretending like he's withdrawing. So he's doing the fake anti-war stuff there, and he's doing the pro-war stuff here. Because there is no underlying philosophy. There's no underlying philosophy. Pro-war here, fake anti-war here. I don't know. A lot of what, you know, motivates Trump is just a reactionary impulse to do the opposite of whatever Obama did. And that's why, by the way, with North Korea, you've seen him try to get peace. Because Obama wasn't able to. And so he was like, well, if I get that, then I could say I did it and Obama didn't. But the same approach with North Korea that Trump has is the same approach that Biden and Obama had with Iran. So why would you not try to make peace with them? Why would you not stay in that Iranian nuclear agreement? You want an Iran-style nuclear agreement with North Korea, but you don't like the Iran-style nuclear agreement with Iran. Because you're a hack, and you're an idiot, and you haven't thought through these things, and you don't understand the consequences of your action... Actions because you're a narcissist and you coasted to the White House on that alone. And here we are. By the way, how lucky are we? How lucky are we that the advisors were like, that's not a good idea now. And I think the reason why is because they know at a time like this with the transition that's happening, it could be disaster on top of disaster. So I honestly believe if Trump had floated this a year ago, they would have done it. Because everybody he named on that list is a neocon, is a war hawk. And they're all for regime change. All of them. So the fact that they were like, no, 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 we can't do this, what that tells me is they realize 
that there's absolutely 0% chance this works out in a way where they get the desired result of regime change in Iran and they don't cause another absolute disaster and catastrophe in the Middle East that's beyond comprehension and recognition. And also they're probably afraid of some sort of attack in response from Iran, not against America, but against Israel, because that would be their neighbor and they would view Israel probably as part of whatever's happening against them. So I think that the fact that we had to rely on neocon warhawk war criminals to be like, whoa, 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 this is a little too far even for us. We live in an absolute nightmare, ladies and gentlemen. I cannot tell you how big of a story this is. I cannot tell you how big of a story this is. We had to rely on the, the intelligence of people like Mike Pence and Mike Pompeo? <laughs> oh, sweet Jesus. Oh, sweet Jesus. I mean, we're holding this thing together with duct tape and bubble gum until Biden gets in there, dog. This guy is as volatile as humanly possible. He's, he, he's insane, but I was going to say he's barely hanging on to his last, you know, last little bit of sanity, but it's gone. It's gone. If you look at his Twitter feed now, every single tweet is like, fake news, I won the election, actually. That's what I think. I think I actually won the election. And you read it and you're like, oh my God, this guy really needs like Seroquel in a straitjacket. What is going on? When you read a story like this, I'm further convinced of that opinion. Because this is as bad as it gets, man. I really can't believe that we had to rely on neocon warhawks to say, Mr. President, that's a bridge too far. But that's what happened. That's what happened. By the way, if John Bolton was still in the administration, he would have told Trump, yeah, do that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Just to leave Biden a mess, just to leave Biden a mess, he would have started a war. This is the kind of dude to, like, smear the Oval Office with feces on his last day because he simply doesn't know how to take a loss. <laughs>